Hello, POS 201 students. This is your Machiavelli video lecture. Uh, you should probably do the reading first because this is meant to highlight some things, but it doesn't cover uh, everything. So, uh, start off a little background on Machiavelli. He was a uh, Italian nobleman. Uh, dealt primarily with uh, foreign affairs. He worked in the uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Peace, basically, or the Diplomatic Corps. Uh, and he wrote a treatise called The Prince. Uh, where he was from, Florence, was initially a republic, uh, but eventually they were taken over by the Medici family, and they became an authoritarian regime, and as a result, he was exiled. And in his exile, he wrote The Prince. And the prince was about how to be a strong ruler. So, and what Machiavelli is best known for is probably divorcing statecraft from ethics. So, in contrast to um, Aristotle, for instance, he thought politics has, had an ethical end, uh, a purpose to, you know, achieve a good life, things like that, achieve virtue. Um, Machiavelli says, no, power is an end in, in and of itself, and so he sets about to create a new value system in terms of the state, in terms of government. He's not concerned with the end purpose of the state, like Aristotle, for instance. Um, power, and as I just mentioned, power has always been s viewed as a means to serve some sort of higher end, like justice, the good life, freedom, or God. But for Machiavelli, there's no ethical, religious, or cultural end to the state. Power is an end in and of itself, and in the prince, he wants to lay out the best means to achieve power, maintain your power, or expand the power for yourself, or your state, or the glory of your state. And, and by state, I mean like a nation, city-state, things like that. All right, so the prince, he separates the pursuit of power from morality, ethics, and religion. The state has an autonomous system of values independent of any other considerations. And so basically, by following the value system of the state, he may violate other value systems in service of the state. What this means is you have to put aside normal m morality and ethics in the service of the state, or in the service of your own pursuit of power. So, if, you know, if we followed, uh, say, religious precepts or other ethical principles, uh, they would frown upon certain actions that you might take in the, in, and what Machiavelli argues, though, is that uh, if you want to be a good statesman, a good leader, sometimes you have to put aside common morality and ethical principles in order to do what you need to do, do what is necessary. So, you do whatever is necessary for the acquisition, retention, or expansion of power. It's the ends justify the means philosophy. So the end is either more power to yourself, glory to your city-state, glory to your country, uh, and doesn't matter how you get there, just as long as you are advancing those things. And this is the code of the statesman. Now he doesn't advocate an elimination of morals. Uh, this is kind of what we call situational or dual-layered ethics. So basically you have you have the state or the government apparatus at the top, and then you have the public. Uh, everyone else. And so for the common man, for the public, for the commoner, morals are necessary. Religion is a useful tool. It helps unify people, uh, and things like that. But in the, in the realm of politics, in the realm of governing, uh, ethics must be put aside. It's a different set of values, and the, and the game is all about power, and, and nothing else really matters. And what I mean by situational ethics is, um, think of it this way. If you are in, a, if you're hanging out with a group of your friends, uh, your behavior uh, is non-competitive in most cases. Uh, but if you're put in a competitive situation, you have to start to behave kind of in a different way. So, um, and that's kind of the idea. Politics is a very competitive game, and to play that competitive game, you have to follow a different set of rules than if you were in other situations. <clears throat> So, now, you have to put this in the context of the time that we're talking about uh, 1400s here, where uh, political assassination, poisoning, 
all commonplace. Um, although it's still ap applicable today, if you think about, say, you know, what do politicians do today? Uh, yeah, maybe in America, assassination and poisoning don't happen, but uh, they do attempt character assassination. Uh, one, a campaign strategy is to dig up dirt on your opponent. Uh, but anyway, the values of statecraft, according to Machiavelli, treachery, fraud, murder, all, all part of it, if you can get away with it. And if it's good for the state or good for the acquisition of power, then they must be done. So if we follow the religious code, um, you know, those things would be considered sins or evil. Um, but for the statesman, you're only judged good and bad based on the ends. So if by the ends you have furthered the glory of yourself or the city state or whatever, you've done you've done well. Now another key idea of Machiavelli is uh, another good uh, quality for statesmen to have is he asked the question, is it better to be feared or loved? Well, if, if you can achieve both, that's the best. But if nothing else, it's better for a prince to be feared. And so Machiavelli, he, he's what we call the first realist, or, he, or not the first realist, but he articulates the concept of realism, political realism, and which typically views human nature as, in a very pessimistic light. Everything's about the pursuit of power, uh, it's a very stark look at politics and humanity in general. And as you can see here, Machiavelli describes humanity as ungrateful, voluble, dissemblers, anxious to avoid danger, covetous of gain, uh, you know, very sort of um, gossipy, uh, fawning, you know, the, we follow celebrities, things like that. And basically, as long as a ruler can, you know, promise good things to the populace, and deliver on occasion the ends by or the means by which he got there don't matter and so and he, and he, he says love does not get engender loyalty because uh, since men or human beings are backstabby by nature they easily break the bonds when it suits their interests and but so fear is a guarantee of loyalty because if they fear you then they dread some sort of punishment for betraying you, and so that's a better guarantee of loyalty than love. So as, as he says, men love at their own free will, but fear at the will of the prince. All right. So, other good skills for a good prince to have, deception is a valuable skill to have. Uh, he must be cunning and able to break his promises, but yet still foster loyalty. Uh, he must disguise his true character because men are easily duped or want to be duped. They want to be led. Uh, so it is good to sort of put on a kindly, merciful face, seem like you uh, are, you know, faithful. Uh, you believe in religion. You follow religious codes. You try to be appear sincere, but always have a mind and a strategy to dispose those or, or abandon them when necessary. So, men must see your good qualities and must not feel out who you really are. So it's almost, you know, like a, a two-faced individual. You put on a good show, uh, but behind the scenes, you're doing what is necessary, and being cunning. And as we said, the ends justify the means. Here's a good quote for him, from him. The ends justify the means. Let a prince therefore aim at conquering and maintaining the state. And the means will always be judged honorable and praised by everyone, for the vulgar are taken in by the appearance and outcome of a thing, and a world where there is no one but the vulgar. So again, very very stark look at humanity. Um, and again, it's about appearance versus reality. Appear to preach peace and justice, but be prepared to ignore it when necessary. What is good is what is efficient at gaining power. Be virtue. So be virtuous when it's advantageous to do so. But if the necessity of circumstances dictate something else, then you must uh, put them aside. All right. So he's interested in means only. Uh, all those that seek power want to keep it. Uh, and Machiavelli wanted to lay out in the prince a blueprint for how to be a skillful leader. And these are some of the qualities uh, that uh, lead to being a skillful leader. Must be ambitious, ruthless, crafty. Uh, and uh, these are both, these are what he called the lion and the fox. Lion 
You have to be strong and be ready to squash your opponents when necessary. Be like a fox, be cunning, strategic, be able to uh, anticipate the moves of others and be ready to undermine them. Let's not be a church-going moralist. Wrote, and he also wrote that he admired a well-crafted, politically motivated crime. All right. So, power is greater than your normal social values. Religion is just another tool of statecraft for religion, for influence and control. Uh, so think about how religion is used in our, our own political society. Um, you know, you, you hear a lot of politicians use religion uh, to uh, sort of prop themselves up. And so this is uh, no different uh, today than it was then. Yes, because you need those things to foster unity and keep people in line. Um, so for Machiavelli, men are glorified for great deeds and actions, and he argued that Christians glorified lowliness and contempt for worldly goods. And Christian values are only good for teaching fortitude and suffering, but that is not how men achieve good deeds. So it's very critical of Christian values, kind of like how the Romans were. When the Romans first encountered Christianity, they kind of had a negative view, kind of felt the same thing. Machiavelli kind of has an admiration for those old uh, Roman values. All right, so this, this kind of sums up uh, the entirety of Machiavelli's viewpoint very well. All right, so a prudent ruler ought not to keep faith when by doing so it would be against his interests and when the reasons which made him bind himself no longer exist. If men were all good, this precept would not be a good one, but as they are all bad and would not observe their faith with you, so you are not bound to keep faith with them. But it is necessary to know well how to color this nature and to be a great pretender and dissembler. And men are so simple and so obedient to present necessities that he who deceives will always find someone who will let himself be deceived. All right, so here's a, here's a good example of a Machiavellian character. I get to see House of Cards, but everyone tells me that Frank Underwood is the epitome of a Machiavellian character. Shake with your right hand, but hold a rock in your left. That kind of sounds like the fox and the lion mentality to me. And then finally, there's this guy. I am the Senate. So, he, uh, if you've seen the prequels, Senator Palpatine, kindly face, acts like he's working for the best of the Republic, but secretly, secretly behind the scenes, he's working to undermine the Republic and achieve ultimate power for himself. All right, so that concludes uh, your video lecture on Machiavelli. Uh, make sure you do the associated lecture assignment with that, and thanks for your time.